Hello and welcome back to NDP News. If you're a returning subscriber, we're delighted to have you. If you're new, this is NDP News, the go-to channel for current international affairs and geopolitics. Please subscribe and enable notifications to stay updated with our future content. Today, we'll explore Chinese Defense Minister Li Shengfu's speech during the Shangri-La Dialogue, the ongoing maritime issues in Taiwan Strait, and reflect on the events of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. It's going to be fascinating, so stay tuned. Shang Fu's Comments A Tenth Summit in Singapore on the 4th of June 2023, during the prestigious Shangri-La Dialogue held in Singapore, Chinese Defense Minister Li Shengfu conveyed a crucial message regarding the potential conflict between China and the United States. He expressed that such a conflict would result in an unbearable disaster for both nations. Despite recent events where Li declined a direct meeting with his U.S. counterpart, he emphasized the importance of dialogue over confrontation. During his speech, Li highlighted that the world possesses ample space for both China and the United States to thrive simultaneously, recognizing their inherent differences. This occasion marked his first significant international address since assuming the role of China's Minister of National Defense in March, making his words even more noteworthy. Li acknowledged that China and the U.S. operate under distinct systems and possess numerous dissimilarities. However, he firmly believe that these disparities should not hinder the pursuit of shared interests and common ground to foster stronger bilateral relations and deeper cooperation between the two nations. He stressed the undeniable reality that if a severe conflict or confrontation were to erupt between China and the United States, it would have devastating consequences for the entire world. In a symbolic gesture, Li addressed the audience while wearing the distinguished uniform of the People's Liberation Army, signifying his role and commitment as a military leader. It is noteworthy that his speech took place on the 34th anniversary of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown, a momentous event in Chinese history that continues to shape national discourse. But what really happened in Tiananmen Square in 1989? Stay tuned and be sure to watch this video to the end, as we will be revisiting the events of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. If you find the video captivating already, kindly give it a thumbs up as we continue. Echoes of Provocation The Unsettling Maneuvers in the Taiwan Straits the current state of affairs between Washington and Beijing reveals a significant strain in their bilateral relations, with a multitude of issues contributing to this tension. These issues encompass various areas such as Taiwan, which is governed democratically, territorial disputes within the South China Sea, and President Joe Biden's imposition of restrictions on semiconductor chip exports. As the delegates participating in the summit engaged in thoughtful deliberations regarding the potential risks of accidents and miscalculations arising from these tensions. An alarming incident came to light. The U.S. Navy reported that a Chinese destroyer had engaged in unsafe maneuvers in close proximity to a U.S. warship within the Taiwan Straits. In response to this incident, China's military publicly criticized both the United States and Canada, accusing them of deliberately provoking risk by conducting a rare joint sailing through the sensitive straight. On the other hand, the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command asserted that the U.S. and Canadian ships were operating in a routine manner, exercising their rights under the principles of high seas freedoms. Wow. Canadian Defense Minister Anita Anand reinforced her country's commitment to navigate in accordance with international law, including the Strait, emphasizing the importance of responsible engagement from all actors in the region. During his speech at the summit, Chinese Defense Minister Li Shengfu addressed the issue at hand, making it clear that China would not permit the freedom of navigation patrols conducted by the United States and its allies to become a pretext for the exercise of navigational hegemony. Li's remarks prompted regional scholars in attendance to pose numerous inquiries regarding the incident as well as China's extensive maritime deployments within the disputed South China Sea. However, Li chose not to respond directly to these questions. Instead, he pointed out 
thought that the actions of countries outside the region were contributing to the escalation of tensions, thereby implying that their involvement was a key factor in the current state of affairs. Echoes of Collective Safety Australia's Call Richard Marles, who holds the positions of Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister, expressed that his country's ongoing efforts to enhance its military capabilities and expand its presence in the region are driven by a desire to fulfil its role in promoting collective security within the Pacific. Additionally, these efforts are intended to uphold the rules-based order that governs international relations. During an interaction on the sidelines of the security meeting, Marles reiterated the message that Australia Australia has consistently conveyed to the region and the global community since announcing its decision to pursue nuclear-powered submarine capability through the AUKUS Pact with the United States and Britain. He emphasized the importance of Australia's contributions to strengthening regional security and safeguarding shared interests. At the summit, U.S. Security of Defense Lloyd Austin delivered a speech in which he openly criticized China for its refusal to engage in military talks, resulting in an impasse between the two superpowers due to their divergent perspectives and positions. Austin highlighted the significance of dialogue as a means of resolving conflicts and emphasized that it should be viewed as a necessary step rather than a mere reward. Lee's address exhibited a level of restraint, yet he subtly criticized the United States by accusing some countries of fueling an arms race and deliberately interfering in the internal affairs of others. He emphasized the resurgence of a Cold War mentality, which in his view significantly escalates security risks. Lee advocated for mutual respect, asserting that it should prevail over acts of bullying and hegemony, despite being sanctioned by the United States in 2018 due to weapons acquisitions from Russia. Lee engaged in a cordial handshake with U.S. Secretary of Defense Austin during a dinner event. However, they did not engage in a more substantive discussion, despite repeated demands from the United States for increased military exchanges. The Great Divide China-U.S. Relations and the Elusive Hope for Resolution Following Li's speech, retired Chinese diplomat Sui Tang Kai urged the United States to demonstrate good faith by reducing military deployments in close proximity to China, suggesting that a gesture would be necessary for high-level defense talks to resume between the two superpowers. Political scientist Chong Jia Ian from the National University of Singapore observed that Li's approach and tone appeared more conciliatory compared to previous summits, although the underlying Line content remained consistent. This shows the existing divide between the United States and the People's Republic of China, leading Chong to conclude that any hope for a resolution would be naive. The competition between the two nations is entrenched and likely to persist. The United States has raised concerns over China's repeated declinations or lack of response since 2021 to more than a dozen requests from the U.S. Department of Defense for discussions with senior leaders, as well as multiple requests for online dialogues and engagements at the working level. The Tiananmen Square crackdown in 1989 was a significant event in Chinese history that unfolded in Beijing, the capital city of China. The incident took place during the spring of that year and lasted for several weeks, ultimately culminating in a violent suppression of pro-democracy demonstrations led primarily by students or other activists. The protests initially began in mid-April 1989, with participants demanding political reforms, greater freedom of speech, and an end to corruption within the Chinese government. The movement gained momentum and swelled in size, attracting support from various segments of society, including workers, intellectuals, and even some members of the military. Tiananmen Square, a vast public plaza located in the heart of Beijing, became the central gathering point for the demonstrators. Their peaceful protests, characterized by hunger strikes, sit-ins, and passionate speeches, captured the attention of both the nation and the international community. At its peak, the protest movement drew hundreds of thousands of participants, making it one of the largest pro-democracy demonstrations in Chinese history. However, on the night of June 3rd and into the early hours of June 4th, 
the Chinese government made the fateful decision to forcefully suppress the protests. The authorities deployed the People's Liberation Army and other security forces armed with rifles, tanks, and riot gear to disperse the demonstrators and regain control of the situation. The crackdown resulted in a violent confrontation between the military and the protesters. Reports and eyewitness accounts from that night described gunfire, tear gas, and indiscriminate violence being used against unarmed civilians. The Chinese government's actions led to a significant loss of life though the exact number of casualties remains disputed due to the government's suppression of information and censorship efforts. So, what's the deal with the Chinese government's crackdown on dissent and suppression of information? To gain a comprehensive understanding, we suggest watching our previous videos titled China's Infection Policy, Insanity, and China Whistleblower Released from Prison. These videos will provide you with a full grasp of how and why the CCP consistently suppresses human rights activists and censors information. For a concise account of the Chinese Civil War and the highly disputed Kinmen Island, please refer to our earlier video entitled Kinmen Island, an Outpost of War. You can find the links in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to stay updated with our future content. Thank you for choosing NDP News. We'll see you in our next video.